Hey, good morning, everyone. It's Pastor Ramick at Holy Shepherd Lutheran Church in Hazlitt, Texas. Today is Wednesday. It's February the 7th. And I'm Deaconess Enter and Claire. We're doing the morning devotion in Lutheran Service Book on page 295. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I prepare a sacrifice for you and watch. My mouth is filled with your praise. And with your glory all the day. O Lord, open my lips. And my mouth will declare your praise. Glory, glory be to the Father, and to the, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it, it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will be forever. Amen. All right, and our reading today is from Job chapter 4. Then Eliphaz the Temanite replied, If someone ventures a word with you, will you be impatient? But who can keep from speaking? Think how you have instructed many, how you have strengthened feeble hands. Your words have supported those who stumbled. You have strengthened faltering knees. But now trouble comes to you, and you are discouraged. It strikes you, and you are dismayed. Should not your piety be your confidence and your blameless ways your hope? Consider now, who being innocent has ever perished? Where were the upright ever destroyed? As I have observed, those who plow evil and those who sow trouble reap it. At the breath of God they are destroyed. At the blast of his anger they perish. The lions may roar and growl, yet the teeth of the great lions are broken. The lion perishes for lack of prey, and the cubs of the lioness are scattered. A word was secretly brought to me. My ears caught a whisper of it. Amid disquieting dreams in the night, when deep sleep falls on men, fear and trembling seized me and made all my bones shake. A spirit gl glided past my face, and the hair on my body stood on end. It stopped, but I could not tell what it was. A form stood before my eyes, and I heard a hushed voice. Can a mortal be more righteous than God? Can a man be more pure than his maker? If God places no trust in his servants, if he charges his angels with error, how much more those who live in houses of clay, whose foundations, foundations are in the dust, who are crushed more readily than a moth. Between dawn and dusk, they are broken to pieces. Unnoticed, they perish forever. Are not the cords of their tent pulled up so that they die without wisdom? All right, so Eliphaz is the first of Job's friends to speak. And one of the things that he says that's very interesting is he talks about uh, Job's piety and his confidence and and, and shouldn't that be where his trust is and, and his hope? And uh, I, I think St. Paul would definitely have some things to say about this. But he seems to be going more with a Psalm verse or Psalm chapter 1 understanding, talking about how the way of the wicked will perish. And although the, the Psalm 1 is not necessarily an immediate thing where the wicked perish right away, but, but ultimately they perish. But with, with Eliphaz, he, he seems to be suggesting that I don't know, maybe he knows some wicked people who, who perished more immediately, and that now is becoming the basis of his theology. But this is what he's asking Job, and he's encouraging Job to put his confidence in his own blameless works, in his own blameless ways. And, uh, you know, he, later on in the book, uh, Job will, uh, will ask the question uh, about why the wicked prosper. And he, he, flips, he flips the theology around, and, and he asks that question because this is a question I think a lot of us see in our world, that the people who are, are rich and famous and, and who have a lot of money continue to get more money and continue to do well, and those who, who suffer and don't have as much continue to struggle. And this is always the question of the world. And it's a question that causes some people to lose faith because they think that God is blessing some people and cursing others. And uh, when, in fact, those who, who receive a lot of material things and who have a lot of prosperity end up thinking they don't need God, and they end up not, be, uh, not believing in him. And so ultimately, their way does perish, and they're not the ones who are blessed, as opposed to maybe people who struggle, uh, who, who may rely upon God more, and who may draw nearer to the cross, where suffering is found and where God locates himself uh, for blessings, for salvation, but also for comfort and for uh, an identity with his people. So 
Uh, we, we consider all of those things as we consider the words of Eliphaz, and we'll be hearing more about uh, the other friends who have come to talk to Job uh, later in the week and next week. Uh, but for right now, we are continuing back in our hymnal, and we're praying together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, who created and completed all things, on this day when the work of our calling begins anew, we employ to create its beginning, direct its continuance, and bless its end. That our doings may be preserved from sin, our life sanctified, and our work this day be well-pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept me this night from all harm and danger. And I pray that you would keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my doings in life may please you. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. All right, well, Claire, what announcements do you have today? We have youth night tonight at 6. Tomorrow we have Mahjong at 10 in the morning, followed by grief share at 7 in the evening. We also have a church pot blessing this Sunday, so if you would like to bring a dish to share, please feel free. Maybe try out those Super Bowl treats that you aren't sure are going to turn out well and experiment on your fellow members. And then uh, this coming Tuesday, we do have Season Saints at 1 p.m. Uh, there is no confirmation this uh, coming Sunday because we will have, uh, because it's Super Bowl Sunday. And then a week from today, Ash Wednesday begins with uh, the service at 7 and the meal at 6. So we invite you to come and, and join us for the imposition of ashes as we begin this journey of Lent on our way to Easter and uh, hope to see you at all the, the midweek services. Uh, don't forget to sign up for our um, every Sunday after service meals. We need some more people to uh, sign up to donate uh, some, uh, some after church refreshments as well as the latter half of the midweek portion of Lent, uh, the final three services in Lent on midweek. Don't have anyone signed up yet. So you can uh, fill that gap. We would be very appreciative. And uh, that's all for today. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.